Former Montana Senator Max Baucus, who of course served as U.S. Ambassador to China uh, from 2014 to 2017. And Alice Hill, a former Special Assistant to President Obama on his National Security Council and for, for the purposes of this conversation as well, also served in a senior position on President Obama's climate, uh, climate team. Alice, let me start with you. As someone who worked uh, very closely on the Paris Accord uh, with President Obama. Uh, what was your reaction yesterday when you found out that President Trump had decided to withdraw? This was a crushing blow. I don't think so much to the Obama administration as to the American people as well as the rest of the world. The purpose of the accord is to stem these impacts that we're already experiencing. And by shredding that accord, we are condemning ourselves to more heat, drought, wildfires, floods. It is a tragic decision, in my opinion. Senator, a lot of folks are surmising that, that part of President Trump's motivation here was, was playing right to his base, to, to strengthen his, his prospects in re-election terms, uh, his midterm prospects in re-election, uh, his, his re-election uh, prospects as well. Overwhelming number of Americans say that something must be done about climate change. There are the numbers right there, according to a recent NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, 67 percent. How do you suspect this is going to play out, Senator? Well, more importantly, not only is your current panelist, Alice, correct, but um, this is a beginning of a profound uh, abdication of American leadership in the world which is going to be filled, frankly, in the not-too-distant future, by China. Serving three years in China, I've become very impressed with their pragmatism, their willingness to take advantage of opportunities. They have a vision. They want China to keep growing, be prosperous, and eventually be, the, if not the dominant economic country in the world, is one of them. And the United States' decision here to withdraw from the Paris Accord, along with the United States' decision to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership is an indication that to China, the United States is beginning to withdraw. The United States is abdicating its position in the world. That's a huge opportunity for China, not only economically and politically, but also to develop its technologies, its clean energy technologies, sell them around the world, subsidize and sell them around the world. And it's the beginning of a profound change in world leadership, which we're going to re regret deeply unless somehow we can get this turned around. And, and we're already seeing uh, the Chinese fill that, that power vacuum um, in Africa, specifically Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, Alice, I, I want to go back to something we just heard there from the mayor of Austin, Texas, this, this movement uh, by governors and mayors uh, to meet the targets under the agreement. Can this work without the federal government's support? We hope it can work because that's where we're left. Obviously, the lack of leadership from the White House and the federal government in terms of supplying science, resources, ideas for state and local leaders is a huge loss. But thank goodness the state and local authorities are there, the mayors, the governors, to step up not only to cut their emissions, but to make the necessary plans for how we deal with these impacts that are already occurring right here in the United States. Senator, what do you make of this, this idea, again, as we wait for uh, the, the EPA chief, uh, Scott Pruitt, and Sean Spicer to start taking questions, presumably uh, many of them on what transpired yesterday. Uh, Senator, what do you make of this idea that the damage itself could be limited by the fact that it's going to take several years to withdraw from the accord? And, and hypothetically, if, if the president were to lose re-election, this is something that could easily be reversed. Well, there's something to that. It does take uh, time, a couple of years, to completely withdraw. That's true. On the other hand, it's the signals uh, that, um, the, that President Trump is sending to the United States and to the world, which are devastating. The signals are that we are withdrawing, we're not part of the world. Signals that we don't care as much about renewables as we should. And signals to other countries, Germany, um, European countries, that, hey, we're not part of this deal. And the signal is, even though we Americans have helped put this agreement together, that we are now withdrawing. We cannot be trusted. Um, so short term, uh, that point is accurate. But longer term, it's going to cause much more 
problems, and we should be on the right side of history. And the right side of history is to um, address climate change. You know, Austin mayor is, other mayors are, uh, uh, Governor Jerry Brown certainly is, many American companies are. They're going ahead because it's the right thing to do. Senator, while I have you here, let's talk uh, Russia for, for just a moment. Of course, later this week, uh, Jim Comey, former head of the FBI, expected to testify Thursday morning. He will uh, undoubtedly be asked a number of questions by lawmakers. What do you think is the most important question uh, that, that, that he should be asked? And what else are you looking forward to hearing from uh, Director Comey? Well, the basic questions, as we know from Watergate, is what did he... No, and when did he know it? Uh, we're talking not only about the president, but Jared Kushner and others involved. It's, it's the facts. Um, uh, this administration could, could solve this if it were just to be transparent, let the facts uh, be laid bare so that uh, any, so the special uh, prosecutor, Mueller, could proceed um, with, you know, as, he, as, he, as he is. I do not know what Comey's going to say. I, Comey has a very respected uh, reputation. I expect him to be dead on. He's probably going to explain what happened in the White House in that conversation when he was uh, pressed by the president to back off on the Flynn investigation. Um, but I'd like to know the degree to which um, President Trump was trying to pressure uh, Comey. That's, that's, that's very basic. Montana Senator Max Baucus and uh, Alice Hill, former special assistant to President Obama. A big thanks to both of you on this Friday afternoon. Do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Spicer and the EPA chief Scott Pruitt expected any moment now in the White House briefing room. They're running just a few minutes behind. That gives us an opportunity to take a quick break here. Russian double down for the second day in a row. Vladimir Putin denying his country was involved in any way, shape, or form in hacking the U.S. election, why he says the proof just doesn't add up. Even President Trump has said now that he believes Russia did it. So it's not just people who don't want President Trump